Hey everyone and welcome to another collection update here on the Dr. Lupton channel. It's been quite a while since I did a collection update and I suppose for obvious reasons. Um, I guess as you probably noticed there is this pandemic, I mean pandemic going on called COVID-19 and uh, like a lot of people in the world I got laid off from work for uh, about five and a half weeks back from March 23rd until May 4th. And, uh, well, obviously during that period of time, I wasn't buying too much because I was unemployed. I was not getting unemployment money, and I did not get the elusive stimulus check that uh, our government promised us until a week after I went back to work. So, yeah, U.S. government! So, uh, <laughs> I pretty much got to the point where I had about $100 left in my name, and I literally started to freak out a little bit. But fortunately, as I said, I got called back to work, and I could get back to my usual routine of, uh, Hoarding vinyl and other such uh, musical goodies and uh, tapes, CDs, yeah, you know what I like. And uh, so, something I have to say right now is that, as you guys know, this channel has typically focused on dark ambient music. And uh, with the recent kind of uh, uh, purging of all the full length albums, I've decided to kind of just, you know, talk about it and then, I guess, review other music too. So, I decided I'm going to probably talk more about, like, dungeon synth and black metal and even other genres that I feel dark ambient fans would probably enjoy and uh, if you don't enjoy those you know I guess uh, time to hit the unsubscribe button or whatever I guess but I'm gonna talk about some dark ambient music some dungeon synth uh, actually some new age music today and uh, several black metal vinyls uh, or five black metal records so uh, here we go all right, guys, we're going to kick things off with my favorite, the vinyl records. Yes, so uh, quite a nice selection of stuff we got here, several to, to uh, talk about. And uh, this is stuff that I've acquired since, I guess I would say probably early March, uh, up until just yesterday when I got a new vinyl in the mail. Uh, and I might actually pre-ordered, uh, I think, a good month or so ago. And uh, very cool album that I'm really excited to talk about because I have a small role on this album. And we'll save that for last to, to build up a... Uh, excitement and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so up first is Robert Rich and B. Lustmore's Stalker. Um, this album was originally released I believe back in 1995. This is the double vinyl reissue in Hearts of Space Records. And uh, I guess if you don't know Robert Rich, he's a pretty legendary musician in the ambient, new age genre, and I guess to a small degree he has some stuff that's dark ambient sounding but I'm not an expert and honestly I've only heard like two or three of his albums and I thought they were just kind of eh yeah um <laughs> but B. Lustmord, Brian Lustmord if you will um uh, is of course uh the legendary project from Wales uh United Kingdom and he's been uh he is and by most accounts considered to be the godfather of dark ambient music since he's been doing this stuff since the early 80s and uh even though I'm not a huge fan of his stuff, uh, he definitely has, you know, a huge role in the development of dark ambient music. And uh, Stalker is, uh, by most accounts, a really uh, just classic record at this point in time because it brought together these two, uh, you know, now legendary ambient musicians together to collaborate on this record. And uh, it's really cool because it kind of takes the just bleak droniness of Lustmore's music with its, you know, more... Uh, sort of lush and melodic ambient sound of Robert Rich, and the result is just this fantastic experience. And uh, I've been wanting to get this uh, either CD or vinyl for a really long time, I just never really kind of pulled the gun, you know, pulled the gun on it or whatever and went ahead and did it, but uh, back in, I guess, uh, I think it was probably late February, uh, met this uh, guy from uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the abyss known as uh, Chicago, Illinois, his name is John, and he was quite the... Uh, dark ambient uh, fan and uh, he messaged me and uh, he said hey dude do you have uh, the B. Lustmord and Robert Rich Stalker on vinyl I have a double copy would you like to trade so basically I sent him some Noctilokin releases I don't remember what right now but he sent me and he sent me this in one other CD and uh, I've enjoyed this immensely since I'm getting it and uh, yeah this is just a totally classic dark ambient record this time like I said I believe it was released in 95 or 96 and I I think this vinyl is still in print. I think even the original CD isn't too hard to find. Uh, but of course, you know, it's always going by Discogs prices and you never know what to expect there. But uh, 
so fantastic bleak and just still you know slightly uh melodic and very lush and just organic sounding dark yammers i really love this stuff and it's uh comes in these beautiful uh, i guess sort of clear grayish vinyls yeah check that out yeah, look at that i love it cool stuff and uh i will say that you know a dark to have to get up uh and s switch uh a d uh, dark ambient release so many times is somewhat of a pain in the ass because uh, I sort of like, you know, just dark ambient, one free flowing thing and then have the interruption, I have to flip the record. It's sort of uh, a pain in the ass, but still it's cool since it's on double vinyl and obviously it looks really cool. And there's, I'll show you inside as well. Yes. And I believe this record is based on a movie called Stalker, but uh, I can't remember exactly right now. I guess you, maybe you know more than I do. So. That's Robert Rich and B. Lossmer's Stalker. All right, moving along, we got Kitaro's Tung Huang! Kitaro, do you know who Kitaro is? So, Kitaro is an artist from Japan, and he's been active in music, I believe, since the very early 70s. He started out playing in uh, a progressive rock band whose name I cannot remember at the time, and then he went solo in the late 70s, and he is, by most accounts, considered to be, like, the godfather of... Uh, New Age music. And you know, when you say New Age, it's really kind of like... I, I think a lot of people, like, they think of, like, Enya, or that one band Enigma that was sort of, like, popular in, like, the mid-late 90s, and they were, like, using a bunch of commercials and stuff like that uh, for advertising stupid shit like airlines uh, and stuff like that. But, uh, Kitaro's music, I've always thought, was quite different from what's, uh, you know, expected of the New Age genre. Because to me, this stuff like actually sounds like early dungeon synth music to me. I mean, it's all just it's all just keyboard based, and it's very sort of fantasy and even kind of a medievally sounding. And obviously, since it's Japanese, it has a very strong Eastern Asian uh, you know uh, flavor to it, and it's really great stuff. And uh, I used to have a bunch of Kitaro CDs about I don't know 10, 12 years ago, and then I just kind of. One day I was just like, eh, I don't need these, and I sold the sold them, and I had I had this one on uh, CD back, and I loved it, and, and I I don't know why, but I, I just sold it, and uh, shortly into the uh, pandemic, <laughs> I uh, looked it up again, so I was like, I want to hear this fucking album again, and yeah, I know I can go on like Spotify, YouTube, it's all there, but uh, I just wanted to own it because I remember it was a good al a good album, and I couldn't figure out why I sold it. And I found this awesome vinyl for one dollar. Yeah, one dollar. I was so stoked when I found it. The actual shipping costs were more than the vinyls. And uh, it's a little beat up, the packaging, but the record itself isn't bad. And uh, it actually played fantastic. It was a uh, really good shape. And uh, this was released in 1981. And yeah, I mean, like I said, this, this to my ears really just sounds like proto dungeon synth more than anything. I mean, People call him New Age, they call him the father of New Age music, and sure, why not? That's, I mean, that's a pretty awesome thing to, pretty awesome, you know, thing to have in your career, you know, and, uh, but this guy is, I mean, if you ever seen, like, live view of this guy, he's just, like, one of those dudes that's got, like, eight synthesizers around him, and he's just, and it's just, it's fucking amazing, because this guy just does so much cool stuff, and, uh, like I said, he's been active since the late 70s, I think 1977 was his first album came out, and this one is from, uh, 81. Apparently, it was re released. The re release from 1983 on Cock Cock Sch What the fuck is that? Well, I guess it's a record label, but okay. Uh, a German record label. <laughs> uh, originally released on Canyon, Rec Canyon Records in 1981. So, this is a re release, but whatever. Like I said, I paid a dollar for it. It sounds fantastic. It looks pretty good, and I like it a lot. So, check it out. A Dawn and Ice by Kammerheit and Felios. Yeah, this is another, uh, I guess, somewhat oldie already in the dark ambient scene at this point. And uh, obviously, Kammerheit and Felios are just total legends in the dark ambient scene at this point. This one, I believe, came out back in the early two. Oh, no, it didn't. It came out in 2009, so I'm wrong completely. <laughs> Either way, uh, Kammerheit and Felios were still relatively new at that point. They were not even 10 years into their career. And uh, this uh, split album has two songs from each, uh, each project, which were exclusive for a long time, but I believe the Camera Heights songs were recently re-released on a, com a digital compilation. I think the Felio songs have been uh, released elsewhere as well. But uh, how I got my hands on this is actually, uh, I was talking to Power Booster on Monday, and uh, it came up, and I'm not sure if I just said I didn't have it or what the story was, but... Uh, 
he then offered to send it to me uh, for a trade for some of my Noctilucan releases, and uh, I believe it was early March he sent it to me. I got it actually really quickly, and then uh, I sent him a bunch of Noctilucan stuff, and uh, for some reason he has still not gotten a package. I'm not sure if that's just because of COVID-19 stuff or what, but I... I feel really bad because I, if I do a trade with someone, obviously I want them to get, you know, the stuff I sent them, and uh, I, I mean, I offered to send Par some, you know, money for this, but he's like, no, no, don't worry about it, and he says it happens all the time, so I, I don't know if he just lives in some weird part of Sweden where, like, they're really crazy about the mail or what, but uh, I really feel bad about that, and Par, if you watch this and you see this, just, you, you know, like, if you want me to send you some money, or if you want me to send you another package, just, just say the word and I'll do it, so... Yeah, uh, but yeah, this is a really cool record of Dawn and Ice, and uh, two awesome songs from both projects. And uh, here's a little advertisement from the Loki Foundation, the label that released it. And the vinyl itself, of course, comes on a black vinyl, which um, I believe Parr said this one hasn't been played. I don't know, it's hard to say because the packaging is pretty beat up, but... Uh, doesn't look that it's been played too much, and I've only played it a couple times since the, uh, since the, all right, that's not going in there, and I'm not sure what that's about, so I'm just going to put this down before I heard it, <laughs> but that's of Dawn and Ice by Kammerheit and Felios. Now, usually when it comes to black metal, it's very much like a later autumn kind of thing, or total winter thing for me, but about a month and a half ago, I got totally into this, just really awesome like black metal kick where I was just kept checking out all these new projects and I was fucking loving it and uh I've been a huge black metal fan since the late 90s uh when I heard black metal it really just kind of like it changed my life in a lot of ways it really made me uh you know approach music differently it really made me like really made me like realize that like it's really like atmosphere that I've always really loved in music I just didn't know it until I got into black metal and uh, one of the first black metal bands I truly loved was Emperor and their, their debut album, In the Night Side Eclipse. So basically, whenever I hear anything that kind of resembles that album, I'm just totally stoked and I get all fired up about it. So, uh, yeah, I guess it was probably, I know I was still quarantined when I got this, but I think it was like late April, I heard this band from Finland called Vargrav and it fucking blew my mind. I mean, this is just awesome, just symphonic black metal basically in the style of like early emperor limbonic art uh it reminds me of also like the first the coven elm in times before the light or the first troll uh ep uh also like stuff like i guess like maybe maybe the first arcturus records really heavily keyboard based black metal it's fucking awesome and uh vargrav is a solo project of i believe his name is vidili pelonen Finnish fella, and he's got several other black metal projects. Uh, his stage name, if you will, is called V Chaos, and uh, this is just a fantastic record. I've listened to this just obsessively since I got it, and I love it. It's released on Werewolf Records, and uh, it also comes with this 7 inch record called The Glory of Eternal Night. And this, too, is just awesome. It's, uh, it's got a, a exclusive song called The Glory of Eternal Night, which actually was re recorded for the second album, but it's also got a, a cover of Emperor's Ancient Queen, which is just fucking awesome, and I love it. And, uh, yeah, like I said, it's totally, it's just totally atmospheric black metal, heavily, heavy keyboards, you know, uh, just, just total, the atmosphere is really immense in this one, I absolutely love it, and, uh, I can't show the vinyl since it's actually sitting on my record, but I was just playing it to get myself all fired up for this video, but, uh, yeah, this is just fantastic stuff, and, you know, Netherstorm is definitely, if you're into black one, I highly recommend checking out Netherstorm. And uh, if you don't believe me, just check out the song Limbo of Abysmal, Abysmal Void, which is just immense. I, uh, just an incredible song. So, uh, yeah, Bar Grab, Netherstorm. And then, the second Bar Grab album, which uh, came out, I believe, two years later, is called Rain in Supreme Darkness. This is more just awesome uh, symphonic black metal from this solo project from Finland. And uh, right from, uh, from the get-go, you can see that the... The artwork is vastly improved. This has got the total like vibe of like a early, uh, earlier mid '90s black metal release, and uh, I just love this sort of like. I mean, it looks it looks like something very heavily like uh, J.R.R. Tolkien influenced. I mean, it's got like all these warriors marching to battle. There's this wizard over here. There's this fucking demon over here that's all ready to fight. And of course, uh, 
the chaos himself is a total demon himself. It's totally awesome. I just I love it. It's, it totally brings back to a lot of those '90s releases. That's a gatefold vinyl. Once again, this is also released by Werewolf Records from Finland. And if you don't know uh, Werewolf Records, it is a uh, record label of the guy from uh, Satanic War Master. And pretty much everything on this label is fucking awesome. He releases uh, basically just black metal, dungeon synth, and uh, some ambient stuff. But just, I mean, this guy's got a real eye for just really coming across great black metal. And it's, it's fantastic. I love everything that's on this label. And it's... Uh, <laughs> If I had my way, and God, you know, knows I wish I did, I would just probably fucking order everything, and maybe I still will. I don't know. Uh, I guess I should also probably be somewhat responsible and you know pay those other bills. But who wants to pay bills when you can, you know, have more vinyl to listen to, right? So uh, yeah, that's, that's the Vargraf's second album, and uh, between the two, I'd probably say I like. Uh, Nether Storm the best, but uh, Rain of Supreme Darkness is quite supreme and uh, definitely worth checking out if you're really into uh, that early Emperor Symphonic Black Metal Norwegian style. It's just fantastic stuff, so definitely check it out. Alright, more Black Metal. This is Faustian Pax. Otuyan Tornian Variosa. Yeah, take that! So Faustian Pack is a relatively new black metal band from Finland. This is another masterpiece done Werewolf Records. These guys play pure black aristocracy of the final dream on Crimson of Crimson Sorcery. Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, so I guess these are these guys are all pretty young. They're all in their twenties and they've only had a couple demos behind this. But this is just a fantastic debut record. And uh, the great thing about this album was is I didn't listen to it before I bought it. And uh, I love that feeling because nowadays it's so tempting to go on Spotify, go on YouTube, Bandcamp, whatever, and listen to an album before you buy it. And uh, I had heard very positive things about this album. I listened to one single song and I was like, fuck yeah, this rules. I want to own it on vinyl. The vinyl looked awesome. The artwork's really cool. And so I did. And when then I threw this on my turntable and I started playing, I was just like, yes, it's fucking rules. So... This is sort of, I guess the best way to describe this record is it's basically raw black metal, but it's very heavily keyboarded, and uh, the keyboards very, have a very much, uh, I guess, dungeon synth, medieval fantasy kind of vibe to them. Almost hokey in a sort of way, but it's just that sort of like, really like catchy hokiness that you kind of like just want in like a black metal or dungeon synth album, and it's just, it's awesome. There's also some really well-placed female vocals here and there that are catchy, and uh, the, the main vocals themselves are this sort of trollish, orcish kind of sounding vocals. Kind of unique, but, you know, still a sort of typical black metal screechy vocals, but just really great stuff. And, it, I mean, the songs are super catchy, really cool uh, melodic guitar lines, and still, but still having that sort of old school, you know, raw black metal spirit into it. It's just awesome stuff. And uh, so on the front cover, we have a castle. I mean, that's cool. Who doesn't love a nice castle, right? And in the back, we got these guys. Yeah. Grim to the grave, baby. And, uh, the vinyl itself, I love, because it's just all kinds of, it's a splatter, it just looks like someone, like, threw a bunch of, like, I don't know, it looks like someone, like, got pissed off and threw, like, pudding at the wall, and just, that's just, the, what it looks like when it's dripping from the wall or something, just awesome, just splattered mess, I love it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever that means, right? And then the inside, uh... Uh, War of our Grim Warriors some more, and of course the lyrics, which uh, are old in Finnish, but uh, the kind uh, folks at Werewolf Records provided us with a lyric sheet that has English translations, just in case you're curious. And I think uh, it's a cool initiative to do that, but, uh, you know, like when it comes to black metal, for me, like, the vocals didn't, it never, or the lyrics and such, it never really mattered to me if it was in English or Norwegian or Finnish or Swedish or whatever, because, I mean, 99% of the time you can't really understand them anyway, so I always just kind of view the instru or the vocals as just like another instrument to add to like the whole just chaos and the atmosphere of the record. So, you know, it's cool to have the translations to know what the songs are about, but uh, I guess I don't necessarily care, but it's cool to have that. And then, of course, the main reason I wanted to get this vinyl is because it comes with this massive poster. Yeah, check this out. Where am I going to put that on my wall? Ugh. Yeah, this massive poster is going to go on my wall somewhere. I don't know where or how I'm going to stick it down there, but that's so cool. And uh, 
And I mean, you probably can tell by the, the layout of my room, like, I'm basically just a big man shot. I have stuff, all kinds of uh, heavy metal posters and all that kind of stuff on my walls. I just, you know, I, I never really grew out of that. And uh, I think it's a good thing. Uh, the only thing I regret is when I moved out of my parents' house, I threw away all my old, like, all this, the all my old zines and all the old posters and all that kind of stuff. I really regret that. I wish I'd saved it. So it would be really cool to look back on that stuff now. But, uh... Anyway, totally diverging, but Frosty Impacts. Otukian Torin Variosa. If you're finished, feel free to correct me on that trans, uh, that, that pronunciation. All right.